Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab, and today we're taking a look at a big portfolio of SSDs here from SK Hynix. And SK Hynix is one of the biggest in the world, and now with the acquisition of Intel's NAND assets, that subcompany Solidime, the two of them are an absolute behemoth, and um, maybe as big as uh, the big boy Samsung in terms of NAND production and SSDs, we'll have to see how it shakes out. But either way, SK Hynix has the vertical integration to be able to offer the NAND firmware controller and engineering to be able to do this all on their own. And that's a big differentiator in the space because not everyone has that. And in the enterprise world, now the uh, highly competitive and slightly shrinking enterprise world, the ability to have an engineering advantage makes a big difference. And we're gonna look at some of that today in terms of form factor. So when we think about form factors, these little M.2 guys are wildly popular, right? They're in uh, laptops, PC boards, so often have three or four of these slots. And this is a long one, this is a 22-110. In the hyperscaler world, what they were doing is taking four or five or six or eight of these things and putting them on PCIe edge boards, putting those in their servers and getting the most performance out of their servers with M.2 SSDs. That was a neat trick, but the serviceability is a big problem with M.2. They also have thermal challenges as we progress into uh, faster interfaces, PCIe Gen 5 and Gen 6, which was just recently ratified, is going to greatly change how the connectors need to work for storage to be able to throw off heat. So what the hyperscalers did then was really go into these E1S ruler SSDs. So call this guy the short ruler for the common vernacular. And this one's special because it's got a 15 millimeter drive height. Now this is something that Jason Adrian, the storage guy over at uh, Azure, has been pushing hard to standardize on E1S form factors. There's currently five uh, Z heights. So as we think about the heat spreader here on top, there's a NUN, which is like a 9.5 millimeter. Uh, this guy's a 15 and they go larger. But what happens with the 15 millimeter, when we think about this application for the enterprise world, is that's the same width as a standard two and a half inch U.2 drive bay in a server today. So if we take uh, these guys and run them straight across the front of a server, Viking Enterprise Solutions, for example, has a server just like this, we can fit 24 drives across, and depending on which capacities you, can, you get, uh, we're looking at over a petabyte easy out of these things. So this is really interesting. The E1S is, is uh, coming on strong. And of course, also in the uh, hyperscaler space, there's room for the E1L. So in comparison, let's see if we get these lined up. Here we go. In comparison, you can see there's a pretty dramatic difference. The long is uh, about two and three quarters length of the shorts. For the hyperscaler guys, this is really interesting because this provides a high capacity point for them to be able to store all of these things in very dense uh, 1U boxes, or they could be 2U or 4U, it doesn't really matter. It's just a question of how much capacity do you want tied to a single node. So these guys, the E1L for capacity and the E1S for performance are really popular in the hyperscale. Now, turning back to the enterprise, we still see a lot of M.2, but it's usually just for boot and some really uh, uh, unique use cases. Liquid, for example, has the Honey Badger. We've seen a high point card that will aggregate uh, or provide access to a lot of M.2s. OWC has got one for the professional space. But more than anything else, we see this guy. Now, this is the SK Hynix PE8010. We did a paper on this uh, with, with SK Hynix uh, last year. And what we were looking at here was the jump in Gen 4 performance from Gen 3 in terms of their enterprise SSDs. Now this guy's a Gen 4 too, it's the PE8110, and the difference here is basically form factor. But with every change, there become questions on uh, reliability, capabilities, can this thing really throw heat off of it? Uh, does this little tiny drive that looks like an M.2, can it really perform the way that a U.2 drive uh, can? So what we did is we took, well, we didn't take all of this, but we looked at all of this stuff. We took the box of E1S uh, SSDs, compared them to the U.2 SSDs to see what the performance profiles look like to see really can these little tiny drives hang with the U.2 form factor that we're familiar with in the enterprise. 
And SK Hynix has provided these drives to us for our testing and did sponsor this work. All right, so again, what we're looking at is eight of these drives in the same server, uh, same workload, same test plan, just to get a feel for, at a high level, what the performance deltas look like. When we look at 4K random read, 100% read, the PE8010 saw 5.4 million IOPS. The PE8110, the E1S product, was 5 million. So not a lot of difference there. As we switch over to 4K random 100% write, this is pretty interesting where the PE8110 takes a half million IOP advantage. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an interesting find in terms of write performance. As we switch to 64K sequential read 100%, we see the PE8010 maintains a, a pretty substantial advantage there, 3.1 gigabytes a second ahead of the PE8110. But I mean, at this point, we're talking pretty huge numbers. The 8110 uh, rulers came in at uh, 40 gigabytes per second. But again, when we switch to writes, the 64K sequential write 100%, the 8110 has a, another pretty significant advantage coming in at 14.6 gigabytes per second. So basically what we see in these initial workloads is the uh, uh, ruler, the E1S short, being designed more for write intensive operations. This just simply means that its firmware was better uh, characterized for writes over reads. So a subtle change in, in this, not due to form factor, but more due to firmware and market segments where they're attacking. As we take a look at SQL Server latency, uh, again, we see a big advantage here, but that's going to be because of the right tuning. So SK Hynix going after database applications, knowing that latency is critical, has these uh, little E1S guys highly optimized. When we look at MySQL Sysbench, the 8010 does maintain both a TPS uh, transactions per second and latency lead, uh, although the latency is a, a lot more narrow than what we saw with SQL Server. So what does all this data mean in terms of the enterprise? Well, we think, based on the industry experts we talked to, that the E1S form factor will become increasingly important in the enterprise. Will it supplant the U.2 and U.3? Not exactly. I think the initial push we're going to see is a combined uh, form factor servers where it's either a couple of these and three and a half inch drives for capacity or these with U.2 to put some QLC drives back there for capacity. But this makes a really great tiering opportunity or caching opportunity depending on how servers are designed. Now they don't have to be like that. I already mentioned the, the Viking server that runs 24 of these drives across the front. So that's the ultimate uh, performance density combo play in a two node box. Now Inspur though is another one that's really interesting because they're embracing E1S heavy in their M.6 line. In the back of their servers, they've got options across most of them to include these guys on there that when you combine them with say three and a half inch or capacities I just noted in the front, starts to get really interesting from a, uh, a multi-tier storage aspect. Uh, even Lenovo has got a 16-bay E1.S server that while it's the only one in their portfolio, they're embracing it too. So I think it'll be interesting to see what the mainstream server guys do in the next-gen refreshes, and I think we're going to see more of this as an option. Now, will we see the uh, mainstream servers with the E1L? I, I think that's less likely. With the capacity that we've got in U.2 form factors right now, or hard drives in 3.5 inch, the, uh, the enterprise need is maybe less there for the, the long ruler. That said, we may see some niche use cases in HPC, for instance, where they want to take advantage of super high capacity E1.L drives. Uh, definitely the hyperscalers will continue to buy this SKU, and SK Hynix will continue to make this for the big guys that want that. They're mixing some of these short and long rulers and system designs. So there's all sorts of design potential there that's really, really cool. But going back to the enterprise play, I think this is the guy. Now, there is some competition. There's E3.S2, which looks a little bit more like a two and a half inch drive. It's got a connector that's, uh, that's like this, EDSFF. Uh, so there's some different challenges, and it depends on who you talk to. HPE, for instance, is real big on E3.S, but it depends on who you talk to with an HPE. There's lots of competing ideas, lots of competing notions. And so from an engineering perspective, that's why SK Hynix is maintaining flexibility. They've got all four of these form factors that we see on the table in front of me, 
but they also have E3S. They've got other things coming depending on what their customers ask for. And they can be nimble, maintain their vertical uh, integration, and deliver controllers, NAND, and firmware that meet their customers' needs. So where do we end up ultimately? We think it's this in the enterprise combined with this, but uh, remains to be seen. But flexibility is key for your storage partner, and SK Hynix has that.